are the forces constrained in Manipur? Is timely action being delayed due to interference from protesters? Well, the army has accused women activists in Manipur of deliberately blocking routes and interfering in operations of security forces. In a strongly worded statement, the army said that such unwarranted interference is detrimental to timely response by security forces during critical situations to save lives and property. A video released in the Army's Spear Cause Twitter handle cites several instances when women protesters blocked the path of forces to allegedly shield armed men and help rioters flee. From the incident in Itham village near Andro in Imphal East, where the forces had to let go as many as 12 suspected Kangle Yawal Kunalok militants due to intense pressure from a close to 1,500 strong mob led by women. To the recent incident of unrest at Yangai Pokpi, the army accused the protesters, mostly women, of interfering with operations, thus delaying timely response. In the Itham incident, forces had to allow passage to a wanted militant identified as the mastermind of the 2015 Chandel ambush in which 18 soldiers of the Dogra regiment were killed. This clearly reflects the seriousness of the situation. The compiled video released by the army highlights several incidents where protesters blocked movement of the forces and interfered in operations. In one such incident, the entry and exit route to the Assam Rifles base was dug up to cause delay in movement. Well, the army has warned that blocking movement of security forces is not only unlawful but also detrimental to their efforts towards restoring law and order. It may be mentioned that intermittent violence has continued in Manipur, especially along the border between the affected hill districts and the valley and the two districts of Imphal East and West, despite the presence of over 40,000 central troops in the state. The question that arises here is that why are protesters being allowed to hold critical operations to ransom? Why are women battalions of central paramilitary forces not visible on ground despite the presence of large number of women protesters? Have people's representatives completely failed in convincing residents to maintain calm? Can the protesters be allowed to continue with the alleged trend of blocking the movement of forces? What are the options before the unified command to tackle the situation? And will the center mal temporary reimposition re of Armed Forces Special Powers Act in the wake of the continued turmoil? And our desk editor Nabarun is over the phone line for more on this. Well, Nabarun, serious issue they are raised by the army stating that movement of forces is being blocked. How critical are things? Absolutely, a very serious concern this Amrita, especially in a state which has been uh, in turmoil for the last two months. Intermittent violence has been going on, especially in the periphery areas, uh, the border between the affected hill districts and the valley. And also in the Imphal Valley, in Imphal uh, East and West, we have seen several cases of arson and even attack on properties of ministers and people's representatives. Under these circumstances, now the army here coming out of the statement that uh, protesters, mainly women, are blocking the route, interfering in operations of security forces. And the army has called it an unwarranted interference, which is uh, detrimental uh, to, of course, the critical operations that they undertake to save lives and property. Now, this is a serious concern being raised because uh, clearly uh, by what we see from these visuals, the video, compiled video provided by the army, clearly uh, we can see the movement of the forces is constrained, which means the timely action is delayed. And uh, probably that is something which is leading to these violent incidents. And uh, probably that gives us the answer as to why despite the presence of 40,000 central forces, and close to 60,000 security personnel in Manipur, the violence hasn't stopped uh, despite such heavy security presence. In, 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 in fact, after yesterday's uh, crucial meet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where he took update on the Manipur situation from Union Home Minister Amit Shah, uh, there were also reports during rounds that additional troops may be sent to Manipur, which means more troops. It can be 45,000, 50,000 several troops in the days and weeks to come. But unless this changes, Amrita, unless what we see in this compiled video, unless this changes, even if you send another 40,000 troops, 
uh, well, it will not make much of a difference because clearly the forces are constrained. Uh, Another question that arises here is that uh, in any of these videos, we are not seeing the women battalion, especially of the CAPF. Uh, it, it is much needed in a state like Manipur, where uh, historically, uh, uh, traditionally rather, majority of the protesters have been women. Women have been leading the protests. So the presence of uh, uh, women battalions of the CAPF is vital to handling uh, the, the, these protests and, and to ensure that uh, nobody blocks the free movement of security forces in such situation where uh, the state is in turmoil for the last two months. In fact, uh, uh, you know, sources uh, who are in uh, know-how of things have also mentioned how uh, the security situation was tackled in Jammu and Kashmir where the CAPF and the army will work in tandem while the CAPF and women battalions and others uh, will tackle the civilian population. The army will focus on the others, the armed armed miscreants. There, I'm talking about Jammu and Kashmir. Probably a similar similar approach is required in Manipur too. At least, at least to ensure that free movement of troops is not blocked. We need women battalions uh, on ground. We need uh, the the CAPF, the paramilitary on ground, to uh, accompany the army and simultaneously carry out the operations to tackle the civilian population and to ensure, ensure everyone is safe, everyone is safe and there is no untoward incident, there is no firing, the arson has to stop, the firing in the periphery has to stop. Yes, things have improved definitely in the last uh, four or five days, but the violence has not stopped completely, that's what we are learning and uh, definitely uh, well, a, coordinated, a more coordinated effort has to be there and uh, a few decisions have to be taken. Right, right, Nabrun. This new trend of, uh, you know, uh, large groups of women coming over and blocking the acts, uh, whatever the army is trying to do to restore peace and order, they are blocking uh, the actions of the army. So that is definitely, you know, they are openly taking things into their own hands. And a uh, big story, North East Life is tracking at this hour. Let me also just, let me also just quickly add here, Amrita, is that right. what... Uh, what the local uh, women protesters are saying, say for instance in the case uh, where the 12 uh, suspected KYKL militants were let off, uh, the local protesters, uh, the, the women have said that uh, these were uh, village defense volunteers and not rebels, not militants as has been accused. And they have also been defending their stand, let's also make it clear, but definitely the army uh, has its proof, uh, that's what we have learned. And uh, this, this, in any case here, what we are seeing here, the visuals also speak for themselves. The visuals also speak for themselves. We can clearly see that the movement of troops have been blocked on several, on several instances.